Hey guys, this is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. On today's episode, we are talking to Rohan Light about data analytics and forecasting. Um, it was an impromptu, impromptu interview, so I do apologize for the background sound, uh, but nonetheless, it was a good interview, and you will be able to listen to you know lots of insight about as to how to implement data analytics in the enterprise. So hang on tight. Up next is Rohan Light. Hi, Rohan. How you doing? Thanks for being on the on the Big Band podcast. Um, tell me about yourself. Uh, very good. Thank you, George. Um, okay. Well, I'm a Kiwi. You might be able to tell that from my wonderful accent. <laughs> uh, I'm a uh, Kiwi. I've just exited the government sector. I started career as a farmer. So started as a farmer, ended as a public servant. So. Um, <laughs> You could say I've been up to my elbows and um, smelly stuff for most of my career. <laughs> uh, and what I'm doing right now is um, I'm getting involved in um, building businesses around causes. So I'm, I'm working at the purpose side of business. That's outstanding. You know what? The the and just for you guys listening, the reason Rohan and I are talking is because I wrote a blog post, I think about two weeks ago, and, and something about super, a book called Super Forecasting. And the title of the post is, you know, the, the attitude you need to be, to become a better forecaster and an innovator. And, you know, you guys should read it, go just go and read it. And Rohan, you know, responded to, with a comment. And I thought that comment was interesting, and we ended up with a side conversation, and I said, you wanna jump on the podcast because I think this topic is important. Um, basically, it's you know forecasting meets data, data analytics uh, in the business side and and how that you know it's, it's playing out. So one of the the key things that's going on right now in you know in the world itself is that we are inundated with data, but we are starving for insight. <laughs> um, and also people are or businesses are just pretty much reacting to whatever hell is going on without some frame of thinking as to how to approach it and uh, you know, there's a lot of consultants out there. They, they think they got all the answers, and <laughs> they will put, go in there and tell them, you know, use this tool, and it'll give you all the magic, <laughs> all the magic you need, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So there's that thing you said, um, inundated with data and struggling for insight. <laughs> so you know, the history of of humanity is all all been about how to process more and more information yeah. it's just that it's just gone nuts uh, over the last you know 10 20 years the thing when you talk about struggling for insight uh, it means that people are, are having trouble identifying what is material to their business mm. so this issue of materiality and salience what is the critical few that's that's the way some people talk about it we haven't thought that through uh, at a at an individual level, at a business level, at an industry level, um, and there is the problem. Because if we do not have a clear sense of what we believe to be important, how will we recognise it if it comes across our path? And so then we go, oh crikey, that's big data, right? Ah, oh, cool. Ah, oh, there's a guy over there that wants to sell me all of this cool stuff, and it will help me figure out what's important but the kicker is these the, these uh, these these investments these big data analytics investments will actually make your your information problem worse <laughs> because <laughs> it will still undermine your sense of what is important and material yeah. it will confuse you and this is the thing is really all business is people business and if you haven't figured out who you serve, what cause you serve, and what purpose you're here to fulfill, you, uh, an analytics platform ain't going to help you. Yeah, you know the it, it's 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 interesting because I think I think to your to your comment I responded you know how do you you know how do you how do you take this you know. You know, go, you know, as, as opposed to saying, oh, we're going to buy this tool from so-and-so company, 
that'll implement analytics across the, the enterprise. Um, and then in this, supposedly this, this, this tool will help us predict the future and it'll better help us position, position, position our business for, for huge amounts of profit, <laughs> which we know is just a bunch of, a bunch of BS. Um, how, what is the right approach to, you know, to, to, you know, kind of cascade the, the thinking behind analytics as opposed to just coming in, coming in with saying, let's buy this tool and then everything will be solved. Uh, yeah, that's tricky. Um, so, yeah, okay. When we reach for tools without understanding to which purpose we, we're going to apply them, we run into trouble. The big data activists, of which there are many, <laughs> uh, are hard to differentiate between the big data salesmen and the two don't necessarily um, you know, inhabit the same space. We There is a transformational element to data analytics. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, my sense of it is that it will drive, it'll drive the ecosystem approach. Businesses will become smaller over time. That's just my view. Um, however, getting to your point around how to short circuit bad investments, and a bad investment is a, is a big investment over time that you don't know how to use, how to short circuit that is get people to play with their own data. So how do you do that is that you take them through basic critical thinking, basic elements of critical thinking, and expose them to basic data tools. Simple stuff. Stuff that you can, you know, Google Analytics. Mm -hmm, yeah. That sort of stuff. That's true. Easy. Yeah. Easy. If you can't use that, if you can't figure out how to apply that to your own data and basically learn as you go, um, then don't buy the big stuff. Because it basically what'll happen is that when you trace back the people who want this, these big investments, there'll be either a data scientist who needs it to do their sciencey stuff, yeah. which is cool, or a business uh, manager who, who who wants to improve their career. And neither of those two things are actually valid and strong reasons for making these these investments. Because what happens is you bring this stuff into the organisation, it has all sorts of changes, and it leads to some really bad decision making particularly around people's careers and their pathways to success very true how does how does um um you know one of one of the things that you mentioned was that um so so decision making um and the basically the the approach or the frame that we bring with ourselves in our heads to visualizing data or inter interpreting the data um, yeah. it's very biased and and you mentioned uh, I, I think I, I, I asked you you know so how do you teach people to, to to not to not you know to not go face first towards what they're looking at and saying oh yeah. that's all we need <laughs> that's all we need to examine that's it <laughs> And yeah. then you responded with something about a, you know, a, a very useful an analogy of a calculator, and yeah. and then the, you know, basic some basic uh, thinking models. Yeah, right. Could, yeah, could cool. you could you elaborate on that? Yep, sure. So the calculator thing is really effective, <laughs> and uh, what you do is whenever someone is in front of you. Um, uh, talking about analytics mm -hmm. or you're reading something about analytics or if, if at any point someone is seeking to uh, convince you or influence your thinking around analytics substitute the word calculators <laughs> um, so you get big data calculators you get high-speed calculators you get predictive calculators you get suggestive calculators and the reason why you do that is it will help you def help your 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 brain diffuse all of the emotional hype that's attached to this industry because 
without calculators, there are no analytics. Analytics didn't yeah, just suddenly appear. There's yeah. no virgin birth. Uh, it's an extension of, you know, a couple of hundred years of really good science. Mm-hmm. And you know, eighty odd hundred years of really good uh, machining. So, uh, so what I'm saying there is, um, poke the poke the balloon with a pin, get that hype out. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing around the framing bias is this is um, this is that classic classic line. Um, give me the numbers to support this which is, uh, going back to your post, that's confirmation bias. Yeah. Give me some numbers that support my view, because I want this, so just give me some numbers. <laughs> now, when, that, that was bad enough, that's, that's a human thing, okay? It's bad enough in conventional business, but when you have these gigantic analytics uh, invest, uh, investments in your, in your environment, you spend all this money on them, you really want them to guide your thinking. And they can they can provide any amount of evidence that you need to confirm your belief, any. <laughs> and, and and they can also they also come with several data scientists in tow that will jump onto a whiteboard and explain in great detail how this thing is truthful. So when it comes to framing bias, you you approach this with the idea of how should how, sorry, how can we frame this problem and come up with different ways to frame it? Because no, no one single frame is correct and the way you frame it will, will influence your response. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fish hook in there. This is why I'm making a, a strong point on this. Is that we use machine logic to frame, to find the data and frame the human questions for humans to make, we're actually putting the machines in the wrong end of the of the spectrum. Uh, humans have to think about human questions. Humans have to frame human questions. All business is people business. Yeah. If we if we if we use machines too much to frame things for ourselves, we will end up in entirely logical and uh, situations that are completely screwed up, and it will all be our fault. So the third point is how do you um, how do you teach yourself to to get around this? <laughs> now, fortunately, um, like I said before, the history of humanity has always has all been about dealing with information and trying to process this stuff. So we actually just have to go back in history and figure out a few things. <laughs> and the first one is Occam's razor. Yeah. And if anyone doesn't know what Occam's razor is, it's Simply this, more or less. When confronted with different options to explain something, take the simplest op uh, explanation as your starting point. The very, very simplest. The one with the least assumptions. Yeah. Take that as your starting point and then proceed logically by testing and questioning all around the issue. That's the first one. That'll get you out of so much trouble, because it asks you what what needs to be true for your contention to be the right one. What needs to be true? What needs to be true? What needs to be true? Yeah. That will get you out of so much trouble. And the next, it also sets up the next tool, which is learn to estimate in terms of probability. So uh, back in the day, we could quite happily. Um, build thought experiments with assumptions and come up with a point estimate. Doesn't work these days. There's, there's more information being created uh, than we can cope with. So, therefore, you will have so many assumptions to your mental uh, problem that you make it meaningless. So, you start to move away from assumptions and into probabilistic estimation. Um, and it, it, there are so many cool and fun ways to to, to to practice this. And here's, do you want to try one? Yeah, sure. Okay. How many apps do I have in my iPhone 6? How many do you have? <laughs> um, yeah, how many do I have? Maybe, I don't know, maybe guessing maybe 20? Cool. So you've, 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 you've come up with a number. So oh. that, which is good. So that's your point estimate approach. And then, uh, then 
you know, you'd, you'd, you'd hope it's somewhere around there. Yep. What we'll do in terms of the probabilistic thing is let's try and estimate a 90% confidence interval. So, we'll start at the very top. We're going to set the upper bound. What is the maximum number of apps do you think I would have on my phone? The maximum number, 30. Yeah, 30. Okay. So we're doing a 90% confidence interval, so there's only 5% chance, only 5% chance that I've got more than 30 apps on my phone. Do you, do you think that to be true? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. That's the top, 30. At the bottom, what is the minimum amount of apps on my phone, do you think? 15. 15. So you're saying you are 90% confident that I have between 15 and 30 apps on my phone. Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, we play a quick game. <laughs> you get to choose two different pathways to winning a thousand bucks. The first pathway is that if, yes, indeed, the number of apps I have on my phone is between 15 and 30, I give you a thousand bucks. Or, got 10 jelly beans, one jelly bean's a black jelly bean, if you pick any jelly bean apart from the black one and give you a thousand bucks, which game would you prefer to play? Well I can't, well I can't see the jar right, I can only, <laughs> I can only put my hand in there right? <laughs> correct, correct. Um, I would but go you've with... only got one jelly bean that's black and every yeah. other jelly bean gives you a thousand bucks. I mean I would, I would go with the iPhone part, with the iPhone. <laughs> With the oh, okay. Ah, that's interesting. What what that's about is that's about equalization because the the um the the jelly beans is a is a ninety percent chance of winning a thousand bucks. What that that means is you are strongly confident, which is fantastic. So I have forty six on my iPhone. Holy smokes! <laughs> yeah. So you you just flamed out. <laughs> and, and what happens is. We can teach this over time. We are we are we are hardwired to overconfidence. Yeah. And one of the things that we do, we can do, is we sit down, we spend a day, and we basically bombard your brain with questions that you can't know. And over time, you learn to you it learn is. to adjust your uh, upper and lower bounds, and you just start learning to assess things in terms of uncertainty. Yeah, that's good. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, what? How do you? <laughs> how do you go about teaching people to to actually adopt this on a daily? Well, not a daily basis, but as a habit. Let's put it that way. Right. Um, yeah. Good question. So it, it, initially, um, I tried selling it, um, and then you know, selling the benefits. Oh, you can think in wonderful ways. <laughs> Uh, and then I tried um, building it into the, 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 the way I used to work, um, but ultimately the most successful pathway to this I've found is um, getting people into a situation where you where they make strong statements and then blowing those things up, yeah. confronting them with their own decision making apparatus and then that once you've got their attention then you can very quickly talk about overconfidence confirmation bias framing expectations bias attribution bias yeah. which is attribution bias is horrible because horrible. <laughs> yeah th this happened because i did it right no it could have just happened it might have just happened anyway yeah you know, that, that eats away at our, our sense of being. Yeah. So that's the first thing. I would just say, get their attention by drawing them into making strong statements, expose the problems with those statements, then show them how uh, they came to those, you know, how they came to those uh, erroneous statements, and then get them learning. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. How do... How do, um, you know, because I've, I've kind of played with this myself, and no. I, but the approach has been different, well, at least not for me personally, but for me too, for others, 
it's been more about the modifying the environment. <laughs> yep. So, so for example, what I tell people is, okay, you wanna you wanna start thinking more logical, as opposed to more biased towards you know all you know overconfidence all these things, and just kind of you know going with the first thing that comes pops into your head. Okay, so hang let's hang out with people who are gonna force you to think logical. <laughs> Be, and you have no other way of, of, of conversing with them unless you have to think through what they are doing. So, and that's the hard one <laughs> because, you know, as you know, a lot of people do not ask for advice. They just go with the first thing that goes into their heads. But yeah. if, you hang, if, you, if you create groups or you create teams, you want to mix it up to the point where it's, yeah. um, you know, biased towards one side and not too, not, not too much. Uh, but enough to where it gets to the part where they, you know, people understand why they're there and why they need it yep. as, as a buffer to, you know, for their own overconfidence. <laughs> um, yeah. But you know, individual, it's more difficult because you have to be conscious of of your own thinking, and that's, you know, that's asking for too much. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the way I do it is is uh, have you read this? Um, you know Michael Mal- Malvalson, or I don't I don't know exactly how they spell their name, something like that. But he wrote a book. Uh, he writes books about uh, randomness and um, statistics and using it in your daily life. Um, okay. And one one framework of thinking that he uses a lot is the is the luck skill continuum. So basically, uh, have you heard about that? Uh, no, but it, this sounds interesting. Yes. Go on. Yeah, so I've I've all I've adopted that for myself as a as a thinking uh, model, and basically it means that on one side you have so imagine a, imagine a line, one point one point is you know luck on one side and then skill on the other, so yeah. you can put various activities that we do on a daily life on a daily basis, and put them, um, you know, where the to, towards what side do they go, and everything that we do in business is basically random um because we try to predict stuff um yeah there's some level of prediction some stuff but you know more more or less the more once you go out you know enough years out i mean everything becomes completely uncertain Uh, but if you if you switch to you know what's going to happen tomorrow what's going to happen this week eh, more or less you have some some level of control as to as to what you know you're thinking but once you start stretching it out it becomes you know, yeah. and overconfidence tends to to go both ways. It just doesn't stick one way. And this is this is the framework he uses for you know for examining your thoughts. You know, so think about it. Uh, most stuff is, is 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 you know abundance of luck and randomness. And yeah. then your skill that's gonna cancel out your skill level because you know we are not good. We are not made to predict. We are made to to think things. But the in going back to to your point about overconfidence, the way you defeat that is by, yeah. you know, bombarding your head with new things and and not ch- and, you know, changing your mind to the point where you're looking, um, as as you know to your going back to your example, your your, you know, the jelly bean stuff is you know how do you get closer to the percentage, you know, yeah. not you're not you're never get, you're, you're never gonna hit a hundred, but you know the closer yeah. you get over time and and that's yeah. that's that's really what you want. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean this, that that's a good one. And this thing about prediction, um, which is um, subject of that book, which is an awesome looking book, by the way, oh. that's gone straight onto my reading list. Super so thanks forecaster. for that. We can imagine the future. That's yeah. what we can do. Yeah. Um, we, you know, like you said, um, prediction becomes easier the closest um, to the present you get, um, which is fine if we're in stable environment. Yeah. But we're not in a stable environment. Um, if you if you're racing towards a cliff yeah. and you make a five degree turn every minute, you're still going to go over the cliff. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but we are um, innately creative little creatures. <laughs> um, have you read the Second Machine Age? Uh, I haven't got to it yet. Cool. Oh, it's it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. And basically, it says, "Hey, humans, be human. <laughs> Create. Be imaginative." Yeah. come up with stuff it's true uh, and I think you know when you look at the lean startup movement and all the various um, all the various 
new approaches that have popped up, so GFC. Um, we've got to love that. We've got to double down on that. We've got to be able to think, okay, well, what is, what is, what can be? Because when you go to what can be, you go to what should be. Yeah. All right, now we're getting somewhere. That's true. What should be isn't a question that's often answered in established businesses. Yeah. Because they'll be going, ah, let's keep what we have. But business, if it is to be successful over time, is all about destroying what you have yeah. and shifting into the future progressively, continuously. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a saying by, have you heard about this bank called Umqua? Umqua Bank? Uh, what? Umqua? Umqua? Umqua Bank, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's in, it's in, it's in, Cal- no, Portland? Portland, yeah. So basically, and this is a funny story, because when you call the bank, um, they, they, they answer the phone as, thank you for calling the greatest bank in the world, how can we help you? <laughs> um, so that, that tells you an attitude. <laughs> so, and the bank, the bank has, um, does it, I mean, if you go in there, you will never imagine that you're inside a bank. It just happens to, to provide banking services, but it does not act like a bank. And the CEO, or one of the founders of the company, he has a saying um, that stuck to me is basically, you got to find a revolution before it finds you. Um, and, oh. and that's that's a bank that's never, I think it's never had a loss since it's, oh, right. it's been, and it's, it's, it's been existed over 20 years or 25 years. Um, yeah. So, you know what I mean? That's, that, that, um, that, that, the sort of thing that I think is happening there is, uh, well, based on the way I, um, look at this sort of stuff. Is that you said they happen to provide banking services, so does a company that happens to provide X, Y, and Z services. Yeah. Uh, in order to achieve its aims and to achieve and fulfill its purpose yeah. and serve its customers, as opposed to being a bank. They. Which, which they, tries to sell different services, and yeah. that's that's quite different, because on the one in the Umqua uh, example, you have bunch of smart people thinking okay this is what we're trying to achieve how can we best do that oh we can best do that through banking services how else can we achieve that how else can we achieve that the second case is we're a bank we need different revenue streams uh go and get one of those things yeah those guys get in the water and you know going back to the decision making their decision making is very is very straightforward because they already know what they're doing and why they're doing it and they're not gonna, you know, just, 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 uh, you know, analyze a number and say, oh, damn, we're, <laughs> we should put this number higher, <laughs> when yeah. they already know that's part of the, of the core or the strategy, and that that number probably should be there because all the other ones make sense to what they're doing, and yeah. you know what's funny is they they um, they sell you, they sell coffee also, so I mean as part of the banking they sell oh. coffee, they play I think they play live music. Um, or no, no, they play. Oh, so they're open 24/7. Yeah, they're open 24/7. Um, they have they play music from local local artists. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there's a lot of you know interesting tactics that go with um, yeah with saying oh you know, they're they're open all, um, pretty much every day of the week. So. Uh, their logic is that if Walmart's open Monday through through Sunday, why shouldn't a bank be open too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny. That's cool. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to check these guys out. <laughs> it's funny, but yeah. Um, I don't know. It, anything else you want to add to to the conversation? Did we miss something? I think I think we covered it, but I'm not sure if, if there's anything uh, else. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think we kind of did. Um... I think my main thing is you got to have a philosophy of what what should be if you go anywhere near analytics <laughs> um, because it will tell you what to do and if you do not question it uh, you'll get exactly what it what it, it predicts or it expects and that may not be what you need yeah are, are there any examples um, that you know or have of of you know companies making mistakes to as to how you're explaining, they might make mistakes no. or public public examples <laughs> that, we, that we can point to that say, "Oh, look, that's the reason yeah. they, they they didn't use analytics the right way because yeah. their, their their frame of mind was not the right one." <laughs> yeah, that man, that's a that's a on the spot question. 
So um, my perspective on this industry uh, is because I'm a chairman of a, a users community, about 2,000 people here in New Zealand. One thing I've observed and noticed is that this is such a hot topic that people just do not talk about what went wrong mm. and what went well. <laughs> there are a couple of notable exceptions. And there is this um, a company called Lab360, and they have a chief data uh, a chief data scientist. Um, chief, no, no, sorry, chief analytics officer. Oh my God! <laughs> you can make an officer out of everything, right? Yeah. Anyway, her name is Pieta Brown, and she presented at one of our events, and she was <laughs> unique in the sense that she put up for everyone to see the really, really bad results of her team working on analytics problems. And as soon as she did that, I realized that's a person that's willing to learn. So what this comes down to is um, we always choose the anecdotes and stories that confirm how awesome we are. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> okay, but those are the, aren't the things that's going to teach us much. Yeah. So failure is all about self-awareness. Yeah. So we want to get, we want to, we actually want to tell more stories of what went really badly wrong. Yeah, yeah. And then what we learned from it. Yeah. So this is why this highly uh, nervous, secretive, um, uh, science-driven. Um, industry, the analytics industry, you don't have too many colossal failure stories because nobody wants to tell them. Yeah. To say that it's a colossal failure story (laughs) means that someone somewhere, and actually many people somewhere made a big error with their investment on the business side or the scientists are going, Oh, the the math was fine. And everyone stands around pointing to each other, which comes back to my original point. Don't make these investments until you've figured out what you want to see happening. Actually, no, I just said expectations bias there. <laughs> you have to figure out, you have to figure out what, what you stand for. You have to figure out what, what, what your purpose is and then start learning and then bring these tools online. Yeah. So that was a really long way of saying, actually, there aren't that many, <laughs> aren't that many good examples. No, Sorry. but it, you know, what? <laughs> one of the, the, the uh, this lady, um, I met I don't know maybe four years ago. Um, she wanted she 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 runs a I think like a um, entrepreneurship center in across the border in, in San Diego, and she she found me through my blog, and one of the third so she said want to meet me and so I went over there right so when when I sat down with her one of the first things that we, that she mentioned to me she was like I was intrigued because well I was intrigued because I was reading but then I went to your about page. And I became more intrigued because you wrote down all your failures. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was like, yeah, not a lot of people notice that. <laughs> but oh. I, I'd rather talk about, I, I, I don't like the LinkedIn thing because, you know, it gives you a space to talk about how cool you are. But, you know, yeah. the, the reason you're cool is because, you know, you learn a bunch of stuff. And the only way you learn is by trying a bunch of stuff. And, um, and that's how innovation happens. So... Yep. I'm more, I'm more, yeah, I have a bunch of other stories, successful stories to tell, but I mean, I'm more interested in telling the other ones because that's what took me to the other ones. And, yeah. and you know, that's more, more interesting. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and I told her when I talk to people, I, I always ask, you know, so tell me about your most famous failures. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, most likely they'll have something interesting to say, which takes you then to the, to the good stuff because they'll have now like some a springboard to jump from to say wow I actually went through that and then this happened <laughs> yeah and then you get to the to the core stuff of what they learn and then you have the insight <laughs> yeah. but yeah, yeah I mean, that's that's a good I like the way you explain that especially the way you tie that back to innovation yeah. which is uh, but also you're describing the scientific technique yeah experiment test, test and learn test and learn test and learn test and learn yeah Adjust your beliefs, adjust your beliefs, yeah. adjust your beliefs. And do it as fast as possible. <laughs> uh, or as fast yeah. as, you, as you can. But <laughs> Yeah. 
there is that there is this thing I, I think about this quite a lot around the do it as fast as possible um, because uh, as we're learning through Daniel Kahneman's work oh yeah uh, it's a big part of our brain that actually moves quite slowly yeah um, and so on the one hand yes we want to f- we want to we want a fast short thinking cycle but we really want to be able to step away and yeah. go for a run or go surfing or watch TV or yeah. just unplug, unplug for a couple of days and then you know dream about it and think about it yeah. um, only because it's possible it's possible for us in pursuit of the rational to take out everything that will ultimately make a difference yeah that's a good yeah. one that's a good way to put it <laughs> yeah I, I've seen it happen a couple of times and it's one of the things that actually worries me about the uh, the accelerator the startup accelerator programs yeah where we drop people onto a track oh um, yeah I have issues with that too <laughs> oh cool about you yeah because we encourage them to take stuff off in order to win the race but yeah. hang on what 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 what's what's been chucked off? What what's what's it's, on the floor? It's un yeah it's un, it's unreal. I've 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 had the opportunity to um, to work with accelerators, and um, I've always had issues with the way they, because basically the what most of them what they're doing is trying to copy the Y Combinator model. So just from that point, you are already you're already making you're already making a mistake because you're you're thinking that. Just copying the model and bring it over here that's going to work when the reason yeah. it works over there is because they have other ingredients that are not over here. Um, yeah. And then putting a track together is insane because you are creating a false belief in people that by following a certain order, you know, yeah. then something magical will happen. Yeah. And both you and I know that's not the, that's not how it works. Um, <laughs> um, so you know, or, one, yeah. uh, a, a, or it may work, but it's nothing to do with the track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a there's a startup I I I I was mentoring a, a few no yeah like three years ago. Um, they went through a track through through an accelerator track. Yeah. Um, and then they they went with me um, after the accelerator. So that, yeah. so I so I so I had them at, at my office for six months or something like that, and. That's when they got the funding, <laughs> Be, oh. because it was di- it was a di- it was it was a different and and I didn't take three months or whatever the track is. I took two weeks, bombarding them with questions and yeah. putting out you know do this and do that. I mean don't don't uh, think that following this thing is you know you're gonna get some answers. No, yeah. you know stuff like that. And then it started accelerating, um, but you know they started understanding that you know yeah I mean there's a framework to this stuff, but I mean. You can't just say that you know the reason everybody's every startup is successful is because they follow the framework. I mean, that's yeah. the, or some consultant helped them. I mean, we yeah. you just those are assumptions. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on to it. I mean, timing is a big one in in, in business world. I mean, to launch something, timing is you know probably the cr- most critical one. And then you know, and, and you know this if yeah. if something doesn't work at the beginning. Um, if you don't have the team to follow through and say, "Oh, we got to figure this one out," and they can't change their mind or their 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 their, their way, I mean, it's yeah. so. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Not so much, oh, the idea and oh, the design and all this other stuff. I mean, I mean, there's the internal part and plays a lot a lot into it. And you know, going back to the human side, it, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's where it starts. That's man, that's that's cool. I love the way you you um, rolled all that together um so i have just come out of you know government is big business but i work on the investment side and uh when i work with startups one of the first questions i ask them is um so what's the opposite to a startup and they go oh big business no it's a shutdown (laughs) and because part of your role as ceo or big big guy or main decision maker what do you call yourself is at some point yeah. you'll have to stop smelling your own BS and shut this thing down yeah you'll have to you'll have to stop it yeah. and and that takes great courage yeah. um, but the reason why they need to do that 
is that it will release release your energy, you'll be able to think about things, lick your wounds, and come back for more. If, however, um, you uh, follow all of the tools and all the consultants' advice and all the accelerator stuff, you're very possibly just kidding yourself. Yeah. And you may take yourself out of business forever yeah. with a truly bad experience. And this, this is the thing, we actually need more people out in the economy making productive use of their people's vision and energy and the resources they have. Yeah. Uh, basically because if we can't get more productive uh, entities into the environment, we, we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Because the, the big the big guys, the big guys aren't going to help us. No, they're not motivated to. Correct. Yeah. Not nice. It's why should they? They're not. <laughs> no, they're not built for it. They're not built for it. You know. Not. So social mission. Yeah. Social mission is an add-on. Uh, yeah. Whereas in in post GFC business, I would like to see social business as the point. Yeah. You know, a few months ago, I had to uh, shut down a quote-unquote startup, if you want to call it like that. Yeah. Um, I, I ran it for, I said, I'm going to give it six months. But see, I created my own expectation. Yeah, right. Um, because I, not not that I, I didn't think we could do it, but I understand I understood the, the context of where I'm trying to do it. I was trying to do this thing. So yeah. I said, all these things are, are not in my favor. So, but what can I figure out from doing this that can help me do it somewhere else? Or even here on a later on a later tent on a later date, and that's what I did. So I, I I was already sure that, I mean I was I had the expectation of saying you know if these things happen then we can go on, but if these things don't happen I already yeah. knew why, <laughs> and it was I was out of my control. You know it's stuff that you oh. just cannot you know, put in a business plan and say oh we're gonna hit this button and <laughs> that thing's gonna disappear. No, I mean there's yeah. a lot of stuff that goes into. Um, you know, in the market, most, most more than anything, are the, are the structure yeah. there is the uh, are the people motivated to, to do this to, to to receive this type of or adopt this type of uh, you know product or service, um, yeah. all these things. I mean, and I say, you know what? Um, I told my co-founder, you know, because I lost money in it, but I but I knew I was gonna lose money either way. Yeah. But it wasn't a lot, so that's that's what I'm going yeah. back to that point of saying, I mean, learn as fast as you can. And yeah. a lot of people said to me, "Oh, but you spent money, and you know, you 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 lost some time on this." And I said, "No, it's 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 like going to university. Six months in university, it's like a project. If it didn't work, what did you learn? That's why I took it." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and I said and I said still, if I go to university and do all these things, I'm probably going out and spending what I, what I what I spent in in doing parties and going out with girls. So I'm <laughs> I might as well invest it in this. <laughs> and yeah. you know, what am I gonna learn? <laughs> And they're like, oh, I didn't think, I, I never thought about it like that. And I said, nobody thinks like that. <laughs> you, everybody thinks in terms of losing, um, of, yeah. of avoiding a loss, as opposed yeah. to saying, what am I learning? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your your approach there is um, looking at things in terms of an investment, and then you're talking about how other folk uh, view it as um, loss or uh, essentially opportunity cost. You could have done better. Uh, you could have done got more with what you uh, invested, but the the problem is is um, if you are genuinely committed to creating the future, then if you do invest all of the stuff that people recognise as successful, you ain't con- you are not creating the future. Yeah. You know, at best you're going to do today plus five yeah. percent. This is this um, the, com- the, f- the first test I put to people that I work with is um, basically it's the creative test because business is business is fundamentally creative you're bringing something into play Correct. that never existed before it is essentially it draws on the same human principles as writing a novel or making a movie or uh, stuff like that um, it's an it's inherently creative and this is uh, one reason why I even don't like the word startup because it yeah. it gives us a, it's a, it's actually commoditized. Yeah, that's yeah, true. It's you know it's oh I have a startup it looks like this. <laughs> and when I hear that I ask 
questions and actually say, no, you have a business and this is what this is what your business does and this is who your business does it for. And often when you really scrape away, really, really get down into the heart of what they're doing, very few, very few of these mm, star struck startup folk yeah. have have a clear they haven't made a clear deal with themselves about what they're going to create yeah and until you make that with yourself you, you're you are really not likely to overcome the storm of crap that's coming your way <laughs> <laughs> that's true because it's hard right yeah you it's know? true yeah you're funny <laughs> well that's that's some good stories yeah um, um, I don't know anything else you want to <laughs> put into, you know, I think we went, we went a little bit over, but, uh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, the thing about time, it's indivisible, right? We fool ourselves and thinking the clock is, is chopping time up, but yeah. it's what we choose to do with it. I, 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 I figure that we could probably talk a lot longer. Yeah, we can. But, um, but who's listening? So. <laughs> Let's, let's put these people out of their misery. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, Rohan, thank you so much for um, you know, taking the time to talk and uh, sharing your knowledge. Um, where, where can we find you? Um, Twitter? Yeah, Twitter's the best place. Uh, Twitter's, for me, it's, um, it's, it's where we tell people's awesome stories. Um, LinkedIn is is my professional. It's that's the that's the main site to ask me professional questions because mm -hmm. uh, Twitter's not really for conversations for me. But um, you definitely get a sense of what I think is important, um, and you will uh, see the mix of uh, of the things that I I try and promote. You know, people centric business, cause based business. Don't believe the hype. That sort of stuff. Cool. <laughs> If they if they watch a lot of me, they'll see a lot of you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Retweets, retweet and whatnot. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Twitter is is Rohan underscore. Uh, believe uh, you know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Rohan underscore um, light, right? Uh, no, it's uh, at uh, Rohan underscore RL. RL. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And then Rohan. RL Rohan. Oh, I, I can't even. I can't even think. <laughs> no, it's at, at rl underscore rohan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. All right. Thanks. Man. Do you have now? Do you have a website too, or? Uh, not yet. I've just got a, a, a just a front, uh, just a landing page. Um, the the thing is, I always preach, don't you know, don't basically don't put up a bloody website if you haven't figured out how you're going to fill it and make it interesting. So, um, <laughs> um, um, well, basically, because because these days we we want a we want a relationship with what you stand for. Yeah. Not just not just a a shop front that effectively is covered in dust and it's got a couple of things in there. I mean, <laughs> what's the point? Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I'm I'm pretty much I'm about three quarters of the way way ready getting that stuff sorted out. Very good. All right. Well, I'll leave you then, uh, Rohan, and uh, thank you. To Thanks again for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hopefully, of, of you know more in, uh, the topic, and maybe even some more questions. I'll bring it on. I'm full of opinions. <laughs>